families, while they have an obvious, important social dimension to them, they're important for our societies, they also have a very, very important spiritual characteristic to them. We have rights in the Orthodox Church to underscore this reality. Uh, we have marriage, obviously, which is the where a couple offers their relationship to God, asking for his blessing upon it, and a family is created. But we also have other things. We have special prayers and blessings at the birth of children, the baptism and chrismation, confirmation service, which initiates a family member into the, the broader family, the family of the church, as soon as possible to participate fully in the life of Christ. We have home blessings every year. We have the blessing of new homes when somebody enters into a new house or builds a new house. There's all kinds of rites and prayers that sanctify the various elements of family life. Or it's not so much that they sanctify them because we believe these things are essentially holy. The ability to enter into family, to, to forge these bonds are ultimately sourced from the fact that we are all made in God's image and that we are all children of the heavenly father. Because God is our father, we can embrace one another as father, mother, brother, and sister. We also need to remember that families are not just about the ties of marriage or of bloodlines. Really, a family is any group of people who share a common identity and journey, a common sense of, of who we are, where we came from, and where we are going, and how we're going to get there. So a monastery is a family in that respect. In the military, schools, teams, there's all kinds of ways that we can, we can experience these bonds of family as we all embrace together who we are, where we came from, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. So in a sense, this is how we speak about one another in the church as brothers and sisters in Christ, who we are, where we came from. We are from God. We are made in his image. We are called to, to become members of his kingdom. And we get there by living this life of prayer, fasting, and acts of charity that Christ calls us to, by gathering together to worship, to serve, by engaging in this effort to overcome the power of sin and the fear of death in our lives, and to do all of this together in a common way with one mouth and one heart, like we say in the liturgy. And so we are brothers and sisters on this common journey back to our one true home, which is the kingdom of our Heavenly Father. One of the most profound experiences at a family gathering, um, like a wedding or a, a holiday meal or, or even a funeral, is this deep bond that's not just about the fact that we're all on the same family tree somewhere, but that there's this thing that's, that holds us together and moves us forward, ultimately, the true value of these moments become clear when we realize that they all come from God to give us that sense that we are not alone. It says in the book of Genesis, it is not good for us to be alone. He did not make us to be alone, but he blesses us with these ties that bind us together. And when we remember who this all comes from and what it is all for, our celebrations while being here on earth have this important profound, eternal element to them, leading us to our ultimate healing and salvation and calling us back home to be with him unto the ages of ages. Thanks for listening to this episode of my podcast. If you'd like to learn more about Eastern Orthodox Christianity but aren't near an Orthodox church, you might be interested in the Fellowship of St. Theophon the Recluse, an online community for seekers and inquirers all in that same situation. We have members in the U.S., Latin America, the British Isles, Africa, and Australia. For more information, message me or send me an email. Until next time, take care and God bless.